Hey everybody, hope you're having a great day and staying safe and healthy out there and you know, you and your family. Just wanted to reach out and make a quick video on how to start a profitable lawn care business. When I was 16 years old, I started my first company, which was a lawn care business, and I intended to just do it in the summers and make some extra side money, whether it was paying for sports or travel or, or whatnot, and turned into something that I had for 10 years and actually sold it to a guy that worked with me, Ricardo Gonzalez, who still has it now. Um, he worked with me for five years and he took it over and now he's doing great things with it as well. And uh, with, with my lawn care company, I was able to go through college and pay it cash. I didn't take out any student loans or any debt. Um, learned a lot about my work ethic and myself and, you know, really learned a lot of things as being a business owner, especially from a young age of, you know, how to manage a business, how to start one. What's it, what's it like when you're working on the business and in the business and promoting and marketing and, you know, all the things that go into being a business owner. Um, so just want to make a quick video. I have had people ask me before of, you know, how to start one. Um, I've had people come up to me that maybe have, have kids that are going to be 15, 16 years old and starting to drive and make some extra money and especially in the summers. So this is a great way to start in my opinion. And so I created a, a little blueprint here of, you know, if I were to look back and, start over um, at a young age, say 16 years old, and knowing what I know now, this is what I would start with here. Now, granted, you know, it is a little bit of an investment to start it. And so I created this blueprint on the high side of this is, you know, worst case scenario of what it would cost to start a business. That didn't take into consideration where if you have a family member that has a truck or a mower or things like that, that they're willing to help you with, you wouldn't need to purchase these things. You know, when I started, I had a, I bought a $600 uh, Mazda truck, a B2000. It was a six, a five speed, a uh, little, little back seat. Didn't even have a back seat, but a little bed where I threw all my equipment in it. And I actually borrowed my dad's weed eater and lawnmower and blower. And I dumped all the grass into bags. And so some of my buddies that helped me like Trino Pena and my cousins and, and people who've helped me throughout the years, you know, can attest to these stories. And we still joke around and laugh about them today where we would dump everything in the back and drive around, pass out flyers, you know, mow lawns and just drum up business and, and try to make some money. So um, if you're a high school kid or college or um, even looking at getting into another, another industry and starting a business, you can kind of critique this to what fits you best. Um, especially if you're in high school. I mean, if you have family that are, that's willing to help you and get started, I mean, these are some things that I've learned along the way that um, I think would, would definitely benefit you. So, you know, first thing is the former corporation. Um, here is the Secretary of State's website where you can go uh, form a corporation. I, I formed an LLC and that's just what fit, fit, bet for, fit best for me at the, at the time. Um, obviously consult your CPA or, or someone who's more knowledgeable. That's just a, what I did uh, to what would be best for you. Then from there, you get your business license. It's about $69 with, this, with the state and forming a business license. So I creating a logo, I created my own, uh, just did, I think I did word art or something uh, like that. I didn't know about this company called Fiverr. So if you go to fiverr.com, this is a, a logo right here, a guy that I use for a lot of my logos that I use now for companies and businesses. Um, he does a great job, great reviews. He's created a couple this week, actually, and very impressed with him. And I mean, you can get a logo for as, as little as, as much as $20, as little as $10. Um, so I'd go there and create a logo, which, which is a great thing to do. Um, set up a, a bank account where you can go in and actually deposit checks and cash. And I'd even get a service like Square so you could take credit and debit card payments. It's one thing you'll learn as you know you go through and start taking and you know receiving money from customers is a lot of people like to pay with their credit or debit cards and receive points, miles, whatever the case may be. And this is something early on that I never did. It was I was always check or cash, and I think it delayed getting paid sometimes. Is not everyone has checks and not everyone has cash on them, and so I think if I would have implemented this um, early on, I would have been able to really scale and grow faster than I did, um, especially for you know those one-off customers. Say you're you're mowing a, a customer's lawn that you do every week, and the neighbor says, "Hey, can you come mow my lawn? I'll give you thirty dollars." You know, that happens more often than you think um, of customers that just need a one time mow here and there. And so it'd be nice to have a credit debit card processing system uh, to implement and, and take advantage of those clients and those transactions. Um, a truck, you know, this is a, this again is a cost that if you have a family member or know where to get it cheaper. I just kind of went off of averages of, of trucks in the area. Um, you know, what I've learned and trucks that I bought for of what worked for, for my company. But this is something, again, I mean, it's a cost that you can, you know, use that or you can if you already have a truck an suv you know really anything to pull a trailer um is something that you can use for this so that's a, a cost there so a, a trailer this is something 
um, a trailer that you'll buy just like that. And then you'll want to put on there, uh, make it a landscaping trailer. So I, I started with the six by 10 trailer and it cost me about $1,500 with everything in included. And I found somebody that did welding and they welded weed eater racks, poles, and a basket up here uh, for $500. So it was about $2,000 in. And I'll, I'll show you what that looks like actually really quick um, to give you an idea. Um, just, just to show you here. So you'll, you'll want a trailer that looks like this here. Let me give you an example that actually has equipment in it. Here we go. So you'll want a, a trailer that looks like this. And so very easy and convenient to load, unload. Um, it's just gonna, it'll make your life a lot easier. And something that I didn't do when I first started is I just had the regular trailer without any of the racks or anything on it. Um, man, I, I was always putting stuff in here. I was putting it in the back of the truck. Grass was getting in the motors. You know, it just really wasn't as, as efficient as it should have been. Um, so I would, I wish I would have done this a, a lot sooner. Um, because it just makes it easier. You get out of the truck, you get down your weed eater, you start weed eating, you have the blower up here, you have your gas cans, you have your mowers there, you tie them down. I mean, everything is fast paced and you want to be consistent and just as days get longer, maybe you're mowing eight, 10 lawns a day or whatever it may be, the more easy you can make the process and, and you know, make it easier on yourself, the, the more energy you'll conserve and have and um, versus loading and unloading things out of the back of a truck uh, can get tiring. So that's what that would look like if you welded that on there. Um, very easy to do. And like I said, you could you could find a welder in the area that would definitely be willing to help you out um, or if you knew somebody. And so that's the the trailer there, which, you know, I started with the 6x10 trailer, which is perfect. Um, weed eater, weed whacker, and edger. You want to make sure you have a straight shaft. And so when you flip over to edge a lawn or maybe you're getting under trees, Having a, a straight shaft that's a little longer than the, the curved ones um, is, is going to benefit you in the long run. I always use Echo Weed Eaters. It's just something I found that worked really well for me. Um, we got to the point where we were doing 45 to 50 lawns a week. And I had Echo uh, Weed Eaters that lasted me three years. And, I mean, they, we really used them. And, you know, they'd get dirty. Grass would get in the motor. And the longevity of them, I mean, man, they, they really held their weight. And so I put a link here as well. Um, that you, if you want to check those out, this is just what I used, but of course, you can obviously feel free to, to find something else. Uh, in no way am I, am I an affiliate of any of these companies. It's just what I've used towards the last three or four years of my, having my lawn care company. And it's how we really you know, were able to scale and grow and, and work in a timely manner that we did is by having good equipment. So that, that is a, one piece of advice is the better the equipment you have, the easier your, your job will be and the more accounts that you can pick up. Um, Blowers, I use steel blowers. Again, I had these for three to four years. And keep in mind, you know, we really, you know, beat up on the equipment. Whereas, you know, when you have people working for you, um, they don't take care of it as well as maybe um, you would, you know, you know, owning it. But at the same time, when you're constantly moving and putting things in the truck and out, um, putting it in the trailer, and maybe you're going over bumps on the road, they'll naturally get beat up over time. But these, this blower really lasted three to four years, just like the weed eater. Uh, push mower. Uh, towards the end of, of having my lawn care company, we started going with commercial push mowers. So I always used a Honda 21 inch commercial mower. Um, same thing is, you know, mowing 10, 10, 12 lawns a day. Um, you know, the use on these is, you know, over time, you definitely put a lot of hours on them. Uh, so going with the commercial mower when you can is definitely key. And then also a 30 inch Toro mower we had where maybe you don't have a, a push a riding lawn mower and you just start with a push mower, which, you know, I did, you know, you honestly, until you really pick up big accounts, you can get by with a, a push mower. So I got a 30 inch Toro commercial mower, uh, which really made a difference from the 21 inch. And, you know, going through and, and mowing lawns, we started using this uh, Toro mower where we would before be using a, 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 a riding lawn mower. And it actually cut down our time quite a bit because it's easier to get out of the trailer, easier to maneuver around trees. You don't need to weed it as much as you would with a riding lawn mower. Um, so this is something that I put in here that I recommend. Um, obviously, cost is a factor, um, but these are just some of the, the uh, pieces of equipment that I've used that have really worked and, um, yeah, that, that I believe you'd be happy with if you decide to pursue mowing lawns or maybe do it as a side thing and, and make some extra money. Um, Bad Boy Mowers, this is the riding lawnmower that we used. I put a link in there where, you know, if you're ever interested in, in seeing what's out there, that's a great place to start. Um, so getting in, once you get started, you get your equipment, of course, now it comes up to starting to work on the business where creating a weekly schedule. Um, this is something that I used to write it down when I first started on a, in a journal. 
and print out calendars and just write it on pieces of paper. And then at the end of the month, I'd go back and, you know, add everything up. Sometimes I'd forget, oh, did I mow that person's lawn? Did I not? So starting out, I would definitely recommend implementing some type of system and schedule. Um, so this is something that I sort of started doing at the, at the end, where I'd have each week of the month. So if you take May, for example, all four weeks here, you add in those. I would take these right here. These are clients. So say a client one, two, three, et cetera. I would take, break it down by each day. So you got Monday, five, four, you know, week one, week two, et cetera. Add all these in. And as I would mow, I would come in and I would add in, okay, we mowed this day. And then Tuesday, these are the ones we mowed here and add in that client there, for example. And then you come in and as you add them in for each week, it'll just tally up which ones you mowed. So one for week one. And then if you were to mow in here for two, you were to do that, boom, then you mowed in that one. Then it comes down, you got two mows at $30 a piece at $60 times your taxes. I put in 8% um, sales tax. I'm not sure what it is now, but that's about what it was when I was um, with my company. And then your total, boom, this is what you would bill your, your customer at the end. So a quick system here that I'll definitely put a link in there as well, but just an easy tracking system that I created to where I mean, it makes it easier at the end of the month where you don't have to go back and remember what you did. Um, you know, which lawns did you mow them or not? Maybe you added a service, maybe you fertilized. It's just a, a great way to keep track. Um, so as far as creating a weekly schedule, uh, this is something that you definitely want to be consistent with, especially for your customers where they can count on you being there at the same time every week. Um, you know, something that if they have dogs or sprinklers, you know, if you're mowing in the morning, you want to make sure they have their sprinklers off. Um, it's just a way for them to, you know, be able to count on you and you be able to count on them. Uh, to hold them accountable, everyone you know works together to have their lawn taken care of. You to come into your job, and it's just a smooth transaction. So in Spokane, for example, if, if I was to do this, you know Monday we would mow the South Hill, where you want to keep everything in the same geographic area. Tuesday would be in the Valley, for example. Wednesdays uh, we'd we'd leave open for those one-time mows where someone said, "Hey, can you mow my lawn next week?" Or you know if you know maybe a marketing and prospecting day where if, you know you've had people come to you and ask, um, you know, hey you know, could you mow my lawn? And, you know, or if you go drive around and you see lawns that are really long and maybe you stop by, pass out a business card or a flyer and say, Hey, are you interested in a mow? Um, so I always left one day open for marketing and one time mows because believe it or not, that happens more than you think where you'll be mowing a neighbor's lawn. And, you know, someone down the road comes and asks us, Hey, can you come out my lawn when you're done? And so it's, that, that happens, I'd say two to three times a week, if not more. Um, so keeping a day open for that, um, is definitely key. So, our Thursdays and Fridays, we really left open for some of our, our larger yards and accounts where we did have to use more of the riding mowers. And um, we have two trucks going and just keeps it consistent because a lot of these lawns that we had were in the same area. We created a route uh, where we wouldn't have to, you know, pick up the riding lawn mowers and go back and get the push mowers. You know, we kept it consistent. So Thursday, Fridays, I left, left open for larger yards and also communities where maybe you have a retirement community or a neighborhood where you have six to seven lawns in the same block or in the same area. I left it open for those there. Um, setting up your, your billing schedule. You know, this is something where I build everything monthly. Uh, you have some customers that pay you every time you mow. You know, if you're mowing someone's lawn every two weeks, uh, this is something that you want to keep track of, of where you can go the whole month and wait a month to get paid and go through the expenses of the whole month. Because keep in mind, every week you'll have gas, you'll have, you know, string, you'll have maintenance on the mowers, um, you'll have costs that'll add up. And so if you can wait a month, uh, that's what I did. Or if you go bi-monthly and bill your customers every two weeks, or if you want to bill them every time you mow, you know, it's definitely up to you. Um, but it's something that I did at monthly billing. It was just easier billing one time. But implementing something such as a credit and debit card processing system, I believe you'll be able to bill more than I did. Because um, like I said, people were, were paying me with checks and cash. And implementing a POS system such as Squarespace or Square, I think it's called, or things like that, I would definitely benefit you. Um, so billing schedule, the mowing schedule I attach there. Um, so starting out marketing wise, you know, any, as any new business goes, you definitely need a, a budget to market, right? Get your name out there. Um, I always started out with family and friends, you know, like, like most businesses do. And then I, I, I created a flyer where I simply just put my business name on it, um, went through the info services we offered, an average price, and, and I'd break it down by neighborhoods. So in my neighborhood, for example, I would charge everyone $30 to mow their lawn. I'd put that on flyers and I'd pass it to the whole, this whole area. And then every lawn will be the same because they're all about the same. Um, they're all about the same size. 
So you could do something like that. Uh, put an ad in the paper of a new lawn care company. And really, another thing that I did is, you know, I, I drove around and I looked at lawns that maybe were long or maybe haven't been mowed in a couple of weeks. And I, I give them a flyer, or a business card, and introduce myself and say, "Hey, are you interested in, a, in a, you know, us mowing your lawn and taking care of your your yard service?" You know, and that drummed up a lot of business there. And and as you do a good job over time, obviously referrals come in. Um, customer service is big. You know, I was big on texting. And if I wasn't going to mow one day, I'd let the customers know, say, hey, we didn't make it today. We'll be there tomorrow or another day. You know, communication is key as well. Um, so just little things you'll learn over time. But um, some things that, you know, if I can streamline the process for you, if you do decide to go this route, um, especially if you, you know, in high school or you want to help your, your child or a family member or friend start a business, you know, get their way through college or make some extra money. That's a great way to do it. So uh, run a local Facebook ad. You'll create a Facebook a, a business page, and then you'll get a business ads manager account. Um, this is where you can run local Facebook ads, target you know your local area and, and city, and just make a quick make a quick ad and just say, "Hey, I'm a new a new company here in town, offering lawn care services. If you ever need a mow, trimming, fertilizing, let us know. We'd appreciate that, appreciate the opportunity to help you. And especially if you're in high school and college, you know people love. Helping kids through school, uh, seeing young kids work and have, you know, that are hard workers. Um, people really love to support, um, you know, kids like that. So uh, something that would definitely work. And then um, going down here and then something now that I that would, I do with our current company is obviously you have a Google My Business page, uh, which is something um, you may or may not do depending on if you have an address. Um, get an email address, create a website, um, things like that where you know, over time, you can maybe scale and grow into. Um, but if you wanted to start out with just your, you know, your phone number and email address and passing out flyers and and newspaper ads and knocking on doors, um, that's honestly one of the most cost effective and um, most successful marketing strategies I've used, especially in this industry. Is you know, a lot of times people don't realize that they don't want to mow until it comes time to start mowing their lawn, and they'd rather have they'd rather pay somebody to do that. Um, so the way I, I, I used to charge um, on the lawn care side is something I developed and um, one of my mentors helped me with who was in lawn care for a long time is, you know, on average, you want to charge a dollar a minute. And so in a house where, say, you're, you're on the South Hill, for example, on average, if a, a home takes you 30 minutes to mow, you know, that's about $30, $30 you'd want to charge. And what goes into that is obviously your taxes, your expenses, you know, gas, maintenance on your equipment, all those things add up. And I found that charging a dollar a minute, um, see, over time, you know, throughout the month and and the year, really helped my numbers and made me profitable. And so that's the the metric I use of how I charge in lawns is, you know, over time you you see how fast you can work, how efficient you are. You get to learn your equipment. You'll go into a house and say, okay, once I mow this lawn and get get it in a schedule, it'll take me about thirty minutes or twenty five minutes. And that's something that you just let the customer know. It's, you know, we'll charge you twenty five dollars every time we mow your lawn. And so being consistent in that way as well definitely helps. Um, I put in here, average lawn is $30. You know, that's for that neighborhood we live in on the South Hill by Ferris High School. Um, but every area changes. So looking at everything, total startup cost would be $5,812. Now keep in mind, I did add in commercial fish mower, weed eater, blower, things that are a little more expensive, a trailer for $2,000 and a truck. Um, now, if you have these some of this already, or if you have a family member that's willing to help you out and maybe let you borrow their equipment, I mean, your cost will be a lot lower. Um, I just put in here, worst case scenario, if you were to get a loan and go all in, it's about what you'd be looking at to start. So now breaking it down to, obviously you wanna be profitable and make money, right? So you only need 194 mows to break even and make your money back. And that equates to about 28 mows per month. And the lawn care season is generally from March to October. And that's about seven mows per week. So you only, need, you only need to mow seven lawns a week to break even and make your money back. Now, granted, you have expenses, which I'll include in here. Um, you have things that come up. So it's nice to have a buffer about, of about 20% uh, to make sure if, you know, if your, a tire falls off your, your uh, trailer or your truck or things that just always will happen. It's nice to have a little buffer in your account to, eat, um, to have ready for those type of expenses that may arise. Um, but this is about what you would look at here. So... Doing the math, and obviously you can figure out if you didn't buy a truck or a trailer, um, if you kind of critique these expenses, where you'd be at. But, you know, 194 mows to break even is not very many. You know, we average about 50 a week. So over um, a summer, we were doing about 1,200 mows. I'd say 12 to 1,400 mows through the whole summer. Um, and it only took us, you know, probably two to three years to get to that point, you know. And 
you're willing to work and get out there and put your name out there. I mean, there's business out there to be had. And um, like I said, you know, people love supporting new businesses and people that work hard and do a good job. And so I'll include all these links here to a, a Google Drive where you can download them if you'd like, pass them to a, f a family member or friend. Um, I'll include the expenses here of, of what do come up on a daily, monthly, weekly basis. Um, and of course, if you have any questions, let me know, you know, reach out and uh, I'd love to help you out. And uh, if you have a friend or family member or anybody that would be interested in getting into this industry, uh, love to you know, give you some advice and, and help you get started. So uh, appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, but I hope you have a, a great day and are staying safe out there. And you know, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you.